Ellen Long is the co-founder of the Braveheart Business, which helps owners build and sell profitable, fun, family-oriented businesses. She's also a Women to Watch winner, a TEDx speaker, and a certified financial planner practitioner. Welcome, Ellen. Thank you for having me. It's fun to be right. here. Yes, good to have you. So let's talk about business owners, business succession, yep. and bringing kids into the business. So what is the biggest challenge for business owners when they decide to bring in or hire their adult children to become part of the business, part of that family-owned sure. business? Yeah. I think the biggest thing is understanding the roles. So you have a mixture of these roles that are happening you have a parent-child role, right? And then you have an owner and an employee role. And so a lot of times that gets really confused, it's conflicted, and so having honest conversations about what this role should look like, what this role should look like, and how can we separate them, right? Because the last thing we want is at Thanksgiving dinner, you're talking business with your kid because you're just used to it, right? Yeah, maybe that's one of the rules is we don't talk business <laughs> sure. uh, when we're you know, at Thanksgiving or off the clock, so to speak. Exactly. What are some of the specific areas that we should address, for example, um, what should be talked about up front? Um, compensation, yep. and that's the big one, right? Yeah, I think the big one is we see a lot of business owners will either overpay or underpay, but almost never are they fairly paying their kids. At market. Yep, at market. So what we like to do is we'll have accountants run, we call it like a compensation report. So you can go and find out how much should your kid be making at this job. And then if you choose to overpay them, that's fine, but communicate, hey, this is how much you're worth at this company. And this is how much we're overpaying you because X, Y, and Z, or this is how much we're underpaying you. And really, both of those can be good things. It's just how do you communicate that and how does the kid understand where that's coming from? And how about defining the specific role so that, you know, you not only are you, we, not, you know, not focused on family stuff when we're yeah. at work, but then really being clear about their role in the organization. Yeah, so a lot of times what happens is a child can get moved around a lot in the company because oftentimes what the owner really wants is for them to take over the business, right? And they're cross-training them. Yeah, so they're yeah. cross-training them. They want them to see every department. And so it's really important for them to know, okay, this is my role in the company. This is who I'm reporting to. And honestly, we like to see the kid not report to the parent. So right. a lot of times right. if we can have them have it outside manager or something like that. We even saw in one family business, there was uncles and cousins. And so the parent kid used to be the manager employee role. And they were like, wait, what are we doing? We'll switch it. So right. one kid reported to the uncle and uncle, and that just worked out a lot better. So even when you do that, that's a much better way to do it. That makes sense. And then how yeah. about with the opportunities or the um, the growth plans, I sure. guess those are two separate things, opportunities yeah. for, for the child within the business and setting those proper expectations, both for the owner and how much they think they, the child can take over, right. but also, you know, so that the child knows what their, you know, the- Yeah, the, what to expect, right? Yeah, what to expect. Yeah, yeah, I think it's really important for the owner to say, okay, I want you to take over the business. So here's, let's actually develop a plan for you to grow up through the business. Cause a lot of times we like to see them start kind of at the bottom, right? right? So they can see everything that happens in the business. But oftentimes what happens is like, for example, we had one where this 80 year old says to his 61 year old daughter, I'm retiring, it's your turn, you can take the business over. And she looked at him and she said, dad, I'm retiring, wow. <laughs> right? And so obviously a lack of communication there and yeah. also maybe hanging on a little too long. And then we have also seen the opposite, where a parent wanted the kid to take over in three years, and his kid is in lower middle management, so way down the chain in this over $100 million company. Wow. And so you know, we had to develop, okay, we need to quickly move him up in the ranks so that at that three-year mark or that two-year mark, whenever they want to retire, that they're ready. And so it's just interesting. You really got to build that up. So where am I going? Where do I want to be? And how can we get there? Do you find with the child they want to move quicker than the parent wants? So, you know, because we, today's society and, and, and the people that are getting involved, these yep. adults have a little bit more of a, a desire for more immediate yep. gratification. Exactly. It's like, okay, I'll be running it in two weeks. Or? Yep. yep, exactly. Yeah, and I think, again, back to communication. Yeah. It's so important because, yes, we are seeing, we just had a case where, you know, the 31-year-old thought in two years she should have the company and the owner wasn't ready to retire, but... You know, and just having, you have to be honest and direct and tell them the truth because right. what ends up happening is if you don't and you just kick that can down the road, in two or three years, you're gonna have a huge battle that ensues because of missed expectations. And I think that's a huge thing about communication. How do we keep those expectations in line with reality? Good, well, speaking of keeping expectations in line with reality, yeah. what do you recommend for structuring the compensation? Is it just salary, is it bonus, is it 
you know, get stock, earn yeah. some stock as they go, some ownership? Sure. A lot of times we'll see a mixture of a bunch of them, but one thing I would say is we always want the owner to keep control. So a lot of times they only think in terms of shares, so only think in terms of ownership shares. But there's so many ways that we can do this. One of them is a profit sharing plan. Sure. So they're not actually getting stock, but they're getting the authority and kind of responsibility of the business stock because they're getting the benefits, right? You get distributions. But they don't have the authority, they don't have that voting stock to right. really, you know, the other thing is you can give them non-voting stock. So we see this a lot, um, even giving non-voting stock to kids who aren't in the company. So that's another thing that's really interesting is you might have one child in the company, one child out, and how do we make that fair? That's a whole different thing too. Yeah. But we definitely like to see you know, a lot of the kids being able to earn stock along the way. We don't like to see them just get given the stock because again, with that sort of entitlement can come from that, well, I deserve it because I'm working here and I'm the child. And we like to say, no, 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 you there is some of this that you have earned and some of this that you've been given. Good, good. And how about uh, for the next generation? Um, is it reasonable to expect that they're going to run things differently or how do you kind of you know, cross that, that gap between yeah. how things are done now and how things will be done yep. going forward? Yeah, we always tell the parents, your kid will run a different business than you ran, right? Because the world's different, your kid is different, the business is different. And so understanding there's going to be that hesitation, right? I'm gonna turn this over and then who knows where, they, where my child will take right. this. But hopefully you've trained them, you've groomed them in that position and you've seen them make decisions and you're comfortable with that. And that's again why we like to see multiple years so that you can have that transition of wisdom and advice and, and really be the chairman while they're the CEO is really the best. Excellent. Yeah. Last quick question. Sure. What's the typical or ideal transition period, number of years? For a child, I would say, I lo I would say at least five. Okay. Um, obviously you can do it quicker than that, but if you have five years and above, you're gonna do a lot better. All right, good. Yeah. So bring them in before uh, you, you, know, you wanna start your transition. Yep. Very yep. good. Exactly. All right, Ellen Long, thanks for being with us. Thanks for having me. If you would like more information about the topics and our guests featured in this series, please visit our website at planstrongertv.com. Also, if you have a question you would like David to answer, please send it to questions at planstrongertv.com.